Chapter 36 The Crash Frankie laid on the hill near the road and watched as Skye and Jesse settled in the car. As he pulled at the wet grass, he took another swig of his too small bottle of whiskey. They almost caught me, but I tricked him. Sped off and found a different spot to spy. Frankie had watched Tom's house for days hoping Skye and Jesse would show up. Today was his lucky day. Jesse smiled up at Skye when she tossed his hair. Their affection made Frankie feel bad, and he didn't like it. He should be the one to do that. It was his right, he was Jesse's parent, not her. That's my kid, my kid you're going on about, making him a mama's boy. Boys need to be tough. As Wade and Dylan got into their vehicle, Frankie pushed himself up off the grass and made a drunken mad dash to his car. After stumbling a few times, he stayed low to the ground. Once Frankie reached it, he opened and shut the door with exaggerated quietness. From here, Frankie barely made out the top of the black truck as the vehicle backed out of the driveway, but he needed to keep his distance. With no other traffic on the road, if he got too close, he would arouse suspicion. Impatiently, Frankie waited until Tom and Trisha walked into their house to start his car. He gripped the steering wheel as he watched them waving, twisting his hands on it as he bided his time. The instant the front door shut, he turned the key and slammed the car into gear. Raising the whiskey bottle to his lips, Frankie sucked out the drops that remained, then hurled bottle behind him with enough force to further crack the already broken back window. He glowered at the truck that slipped around the curves in front of him. Do you think you can just beat me and leave me for dead? Take my boy? Thought it'd scare me of, huh? Guess what? I don't scare easy. You just lit the fire, boys, you just lit the fire. My whole life people been looking down on me. You're no better than me. Bad enough when the state took him. But there ain't no law now. I want my boy back, I just take him. You know bodies ain't got any right to steal what's mine. And that boy is mine, like it or not. Determined, Frankie removed a hand from the steering wheel to stroke the gun on the seat beside him. I'll get him back whatever it takes. Anger popped and stretched within him, and he inhaled deeply only to jerk in anguish. Broken ribs, and no doctor meant a slow recovery for Frankie. His resentment grew along with his pain. What if, instead of only getting his boy back, he made them pay for taking Jesse in the first place? Frankie wiggled a little straighter in his seat. He liked that idea. Hurt them like they had hurt him. Frankie sucked in a lip as he attempted to think of a plan. What he had in the trunk would help, but it would take more than him. Trouble was, there wasn't much he was able to do by himself and like-minded people, well, any people were hard to come by nowadays. Carefully, Frankie worked his way around the curves. One wrong move in the group in front of him would see him. He couldn't allow them even a glance. Today he would find out where they lived. Later he would return to do what he wanted. Dylan's truck slowed, and Frankie brought his car to a crawl. Worried he was caught, Frankie stopped before the next turn, got out and walked to the curve. To peek around the rocky hill, he kept close to it and slowly worked his way to where he could observe Cole's group. Dylan's pickup idled, and a quick glimpse showed Frankie an armed Dylan and Wade striding down the road directly at him. Frankie ran for the gun he'd left in the car. He skidded to a stop and glanced back. He'd never make it before they rounded the corner. Desperately, he searched the ground on the lower side of the hill until he spotted a narrow trail. Frankie raced for it. He slid down the steep path kicking up wet mud and stones. He grabbed a tree to break his fall and laid flat against the hillside. Frankie saw Wade and Dylan from the chest up as they sauntered to his car and took his gun and a few other items from the front seat. They moved to the loaded trunk, and Frankie held his breath. The two talked as they scanned the area. When they stepped closer to the edge, Frankie blew out a sigh. If they had opened that, he didn't know what would happen. Instead, Dylan and Wade readied their weapons and called out to Frankie. Wade said something to Dylan, and they both laughed. At Dylan's delighted nod, Wade got into the driver's seat of Frankie's car and maneuvered it, so it crossed the street instead of a line with it. The battered car now faced the clear expanse of sky and the edge of the road. Realizing their intention, Frankie took off, half running, half skidding down the hill. He knew what was in that trunk, he'd put it there. Hey! 
one of them said as Frankie continued down the hill as fast as he could go. He wasn't stopping. He knew what waited for him if he did. Hey, came the shout again. Gravel crunched, and there was a scrape of metal against pavement as the two brothers pushed the front end off the edge. Frankie threw a glance over his shoulder, hoping it would stop there. Instead, it flew over the side so close to him Frankie could have touched it. Front over end, it rushed by him, grinding and crashing with the first hit. Frankie dodged the rock and dirt that shot up all around him, stinging him in a million places. The car continued its erratic, deafening course as it went. He ducked and hugged the dirt, waiting. On the final smash, it teetered back and forth before it stopped and shuddered. For a moment, Frankie thought the car's journey was at its end, but he was wrong. The vehicle shot upward as it exploded into hundreds of fiery pieces. Orange and yellow flames decorated the fragments and licked at what remained on the ground. Frankie ducked what he guessed was part of a door coming at him. It hit the hill above him and slid, smoke rolling off the metal and the turf beneath it. Frankie's face, hot from the explosion, reddened further with the shout of triumph from above. Dylan and Wade laughed and applauded at the sight of the flames, then slapped each other on the back as they walked toward their truck. Once their truck roared to life, Frankie grabbed at grass and roots, pulling himself up the hill. Ribs aching from the effort, he hauled himself onto the road and stared after the pickup. His anger reached a fervor rivaling the flames below. I'm gonna kill them.